here in Colorado Springs shooting some tests with the GoPro. Today we've got the Hero 3 Black Edition, the Hero 2 1080 version, and the original HD Hero, which also shot 1080. We're going to be comparing kind of what the differences of the Hero 3 are and what the step up is from the Hero 2. I'm approaching this review as a filmmaker, not so much somebody that's going to use a GoPro as an action sports camera. And what that means for me is that I'm looking at things like dynamic range, color, compression. I really want to know, is the GoPro 3 going to be able to cut in with the cinematic cameras I already have on set? One of the value adds that GoPro added to the Hero 3 is the enabling of a ProTune mode, which actually was on the Hero 2 as well, but is even better on the Hero 3. And essentially what it does is it flattens out your image, as you can see here, and it also increases the bitrate so that there's less compression. The Hero 1 had a 17 megabit per second uh, compression, and the ProTune mode on the Hero 3 gives you up to 45 megabits per second. All right, so we're gonna try to hook up this GoPro app here. And theoretically, the blue light should come on. Yep, or blinks, I suppose. So here you'll see on my iPhone, I've got a preview of what's on the Hero 3 at the moment. Now, there is about a five second delay, so I'll move over here, and then that'll move over there. But nonetheless, if you're framing up a shot, pretty sweet feature to have. One little quirky thing about the GoPro app is, from what we've found, you can monitor in ProTune, you cannot monitor while recording in ProTune, but if you're not in ProTune, then you can still monitor while you're recording. Not only can you do preview on the GoPro app, you can actually change the camera settings from the app, which I think is fantastic. So for this particular setup here on the pond, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the resolution, and uh, the reason I'm gonna do that is so that all the cameras have the same setting going on. And then I'm gonna change the field of view on the GoPro Hero 3 so that you can see what the difference between the wide, the medium, and the narrow field of view is. Here we go. Beautiful shot. It's brilliant. The Hero 3 adds a 1080 60 and 120 frame per second 720 mode. And they actually look pretty good. This is the 1080 60 here of Mr. Cody Zinger doing a kick. Wow. That's nice. And once again at 120 frames per second 720p. Next test is a resolution test, uh, real world, not shooting charts here. We climbed up to this mountain to get an overlooking view to see if we could see some sharpness differences. So what you'll see up here next is a 4K, a 2.7K, and a 1080 file, all from the Hero 3 in ProTune mode. And honestly, not seeing much of a difference here when they're scaled to fit into this timeline. Um, I mean, you could intercut between these no problems, they'd all look pretty much exactly the same. However, when you punch into the image and you jump into the 4K mode here, you'll notice that there's a pretty substantial amount of detail in these houses. You step down the 2.7K, you lose a little bit of that detail, and then even more with the 1080. The downside is that the 4K mode is only 12 frames per second, so you can't really use it outside of landscape mode shots and things like that.
Last but not least, the low light test. This was shot about 4.30 after the sun had just set behind the mountains. The only source is the window light and the lights on the tree. In this test, I was hoping to see if there would be a penalty or a benefit for shooting in a low light, high ISO situation uh, to see if that lamp might retain a little bit more detail if the sensors gained up. From what it looks like to the three sensors, that's not really the case. However, the Hero 3, once again, does add a substantial amount of information across the board. up the review. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.